Good afternoon, good evening, you too. My name is Dre Cuts by Dre New Styles Mobile Barber, and this is my episode uh, 101 series, starting out as a beginning barber. This is my mid-fade haircut series, starting out as a beginning barber. Right now, today we're gonna talk about this mid-fade. Um, I'm in the shop today, I'm not out in the mobile van. We're going to discuss how I go about cutting the mid-fade. And as you can see in the video that I'm presenting to you, I like to start my mid-fades low. Even my high-fades low, I like to start them low. I like to start them around the eyebrow. I take a little bit of arch up in them and bring the, the fade down around the occipital bone in the back of the head. And I also don't start my ball fades. This is a mid-ball fade. I also don't start my mid ball fades with a with the edger, with a ball edger. I start them with my clippers closed all the way up, so that's pretty much by a zero they would call it. Triple eye, sometimes you would call it. I don't like to start with the edgers because, you know, as you see later on in the video, it's a lot easier if you don't have to take that ball line out and let you cut your haircuts a little bit quicker and, and time is of essence so as you can see right here in this video this is a real time video i'm shooting this video with my chest camera so forgive me if it seems like it's kind of shaky it's the best form of recording that i could come up with to do my videos as fast and get them out as quick as possible so here we go i'm, I'm cleaning up the bottom going around this the cut at the bottom trying to keep that as, as smooth as possible trying to keep my line as symmetric as possible you see right there that little bit that i want to take out so i want to try to keep that as symmetrical and as smooth as possible all the way around about the same on either side that's because that's going to be real important for the fade after that, I like to go right into my shape up. I like to do a pre-shape up is what I call it. And this pre-shape up is so that I can define my hairline, why he still has a lot of hair on his head, why the hair is still thick before you start to cut into it so you can see the hairline a lot better. I believe this technique is the best technique because it allows you not to push the hairline back. If I was to go ahead and fade into this cut right now and do the hairline last, then I would fade away a lot of hair and potentially push the hairline back. But by shaping him up now, doing what I call a pre-shape up, I'm allowing myself to keep that hairline dark so that I can see it while I'm fading it because I want to keep that front area a little bit darker at the top therefore you don't have to spray highlights and i don't like to use highlights a lot so i like to keep my cut as natural as possible so the next day when they wake up and they still got the same looking haircut you know if you use a lot of highlights the next day the haircut don't look as sharp they like wow this haircut don't look nothing like it did yesterday that's because of those highlights so if you use this technique you can use less highlights or zero highlights at all so that's one reason why I like to uh, shape up, do my pre-shape up. Now I'm taking out, I'm starting to, t to uh, actually add another fade line. I put the number one guard on my clippers now and I started to create another line. After that, I put the number two guard on, a, a slightly bigger guard and that's to debulk out that, that top area. This particular client, he doesn't want anything cut off the top. He likes to style his own top. I pretty much trim his top about every three weeks, but you know he likes to style and moose it up. And when he leaves the shop, he want to be fresh and ready to go. So with that in mind, you know I try my best not to disturb the top of his hair at all. At the same time, giving him a nice fade, a nice blend. So as you can see here. I have on an even bigger guard. I even go up to the number three guard as I get higher to the top and try to debulk some of that out. Then, you know, I'll switch back down to a number one guard. And as as you can see here, I'm trying to, uh, I'm attempting to take out that, that fade line that I put in with the number one guard. I'm switching over to the other side of the head and doing the same process with that flick of the wrist motion. If you notice, every time I go up, I'm flicking out with my wrist. That's very important. You don't want to dig into the haircut. You want to kind of flick out with your wrist every single time. And that, that allows you to get a more even, a more smooth fade 
as well. So as you see, you know, it's it's not a it's not a like Joe M, Joel and B would say, trust the process. This is not a fast thing, you know. Some some cuts you see on YouTube, they zip through them cuts so fast, you're like, wow, how they get that cut so perfect? It's a lot of detail work involved when cutting your hair, going over the same area over and over again, using your clippers to, you know, to debulk, to fade out. And, and to try to get that fade as smooth as possible. As you can see now, I'm, I'm, I put on a bigger guard. Now I'm going a little bit higher at the top, combing down as I cut to try my best and to, to blend that out, to smooth that out as much as possible. I use uh, the camera that I'm using, like I said earlier, it's a chest camera and it. I, I just got it, you know, and I'm, I'm having figured out how to, how to uh, well, I actually just figured out how to keep that that blur, that automatic changing of the lenses. So you can, as you can see, it's it's blurring the camera a little bit and it's focusing on my clippers in my hand more than the haircut. I just learned how to fix that. So in my future videos, you know, they'll be a lot more clean looking. You won't have to worry about that blur going back and forth. But I did a lot of work in this haircut. I did want to use this video and it's not too bad. So I, I kept it anyway. One barber on YouTube told me, always post your work, you know, good and bad. So right now I'm going around that bottom line, that bottom, that bottom line that I put in. No guard is on right now. I may pull the clipper all the way back, the, the, uh, the lever all the way back on the clipper to open it all the way up to about a one and, and try to flick and fade that bottom line out. Then you throw a, a half guard on. I like to throw that half guard on and continue to flick, flick of the wrist and continue to try to fade that, that bottom line out. Now, as you can see, you know, it's a lot of detail work that goes on in these cuts, man. Over and over again, consistently, you have to detail your haircut. And that's going to come with time, learning how much a particular clipper cuts off. You know, I don't, I don't suggest as a beginning barber to use a whole lot of different clippers get you one set of good clippers that you like stick with them and learn those clippers learn how much hair those clippers cut off when you're cutting coarse hair learn how much hair those clippers cut off when you're cutting straight hair you know clippers react differently to different textures of hair so that's one thing you have to do when you're doing detail work you you already have to know with experience well when I dig into this, when I cut into this hair, how much hair is it going to actually cut off? You know, fine hair cuts a lot more, a lot easier than coarser hair. So you can go into some fine hair and really take out a, a bulk of hair real easily. So you got to be careful when you're cutting fine straight hair. This particular customer right here, he's about in between. He doesn't have coarse hair and his hair isn't super fine, but it is straight. So only coming with experience as you cut more and more different grades of hair will you pretty much determine how much your particular clipper will cut off because all clippers are different once you kind of gauge how much your clipper cuts off then you will be able to blend a lot faster you'll be able to you know judge by your ear and your eye you know i like to cut by ear as well because you can actually hear the hair the hair coming off as well Right now, I'm, I'm still doing detail work. Detail work takes time. You know, each time I go back and, and go out of the screen a little bit or pull my clippers back, I'm normally adjusting the lever on my clipper. Each time I come off the client's head, I'm hitting that lever. You can't see it because it's on the other side of the clipper, but each time I pull that clipper back, I'm adjusting the lever. I may look at a spot and say, okay, I'm gonna work at that spot. I gotta pull the lever up cut more hair off or I got to pull it back to cut less hair off right here working around that occipital bone in the back trying to get that part as smooth as possible I started out without the guard now I put a half guard in and try to feather try to flick the rest of that out without going too high up into the haircut that's that's why it's so important to use that flick of the wrist action very important when you're cutting cutting hair no matter what grade no matter what style it is so as you see i'm continuing to do detail work now is when i actually do my ball part 
the last thing I do, well not the very last, but towards the end of the haircut, I'll start to ball the fade. I'll use my edgers and I'll start to ball them all around. Also flicking out the fade. That way I don't ever put a ball line in. As you can see here, I'm not creating a new line that I have to fade out, but I am balling out the bottom. I think that gives you a much more even blend from top to bottom. You can see a gradual smooth fade, almost like a waterfall fade from top to bottom when you do this step later on in the haircut, opposed to starting off your haircut with a hard ball line that you gotta work out. This way I think you cut a lot faster, you get through your cuts a lot faster, and I believe they're a lot smoother. So I do recommend this technique. This is a real time haircut. As you can see, I'm about 11, 12 minutes into this haircut already. And I'm and it's, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's almost finished. So that's, that's the technique I like to use. Right now I switched up the clipper. I got a much sharper clipper because I like to get it a lot cleaner at the bottom. I don't use ball edgers or uh, shavers to ball out the bottom of my clients. And I got another video on that. I don't use that because after being in business for 30 years, I've seen a lot. Ball edgers can really break some people out. Not all, but it can break a lot of people out. Not just break them out, give them permanent scars on the back of the neck. So. I don't use ball edges for shaving, you know. I get my closest ball shave that I have, shaver, or I mean, ray clipper. My closest ball edger clipper that I have, I adjust the blade as sharp as I can get it, and I'll use that to ball out the bottom, as you can see here. There's no ball line being created. You can't see it. You know, I, I'm gonna zoom into the haircut a little bit later, but you can you can see the natural baldness at the bottom. Here it is. Now I'm just cleaning up the shape up again. Like I said earlier, I did a pre-shape up. Now towards the end of the haircut, I'll do the final shape up, and I'll give them a nice sharp line using that pre-shape up guideline that I started at the very beginning. That way you don't push the hairline back. That way you keep his hair his hairline as natural as possible. This particular customer right here, because he's light skinned and he has black hair, I'll give him, clean him up with the razor as well. So I just put some, some shaving cream on him, some lotion, whatever, whatever you might like to use and use the razor just to clean that shape up up. This way you don't have to use any type of highlights. As you can see, this customer doesn't have any highlights. I'm not going to spray him anything and the cut is going to look real crispy, real sharp without even having to use any highlights. And that's because I leave it just a little bit darker around the front of that hairline. And cleaning it up with the razor also will, will bring it out. So that's one of the things that I really like to do to enhance my haircut. I give powder lines as well. I didn't do a powder line on this particular customer. I normally do powder lines on darker skin people so you can see that powder effect. But using the razor really brings this haircut out, really brings the shape up out and allows the shape up to last a little bit longer. Now I'm back to detailing. I brought my small brush out just to brush down and just try to take out any areas, any nicks, any dark or light spots that I might see just to get that fade as smooth as possible. and. Detail work takes time. It takes practice and it takes time. Some cuts you see on YouTube, they really don't show you how much time and dedication goes into detailing. But detailing does take some time and it requires a lot of practice on different grades of hair in order to, you know, to become your best. Typically, I, I schedule my appointments 30 minutes apart, so I got about 20 to 25 minutes to get through a full haircut. That could be a, a fade, fade with a beard, anything of the like, whatever they book. So with my technique, my technique allows you to cut a lot faster. We're around 15 minutes right now. It allows you to cut a lot faster and as well be efficient now. I have been cutting a while. Speed does come with time. I'm not expecting, you know, barbers to come out here and be able to cut as fast as me within a year or even two years. It does come with time. The more you do something, the faster and the more efficient you're going to become at it. So definitely just keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing, and your speed will increase. 
but you have to make sure you put in enough time for detailing allow at least 10 minutes of your haircut to be detailing like you see here i'm going through this haircut taking my time to detail this cut and make it as, as sharp and as fine as i possibly can now i know i got another client coming in so i'm also looking at my my watch and i know some people out here might be like nah you, you, you shouldn't do that but you know we're in business in, in any business you get paid by the hour you get paid by all the amount of what you do within a certain amount of time so you can't spend all day on a haircut no matter how good you want them to look so you got to give yourself a time frame and wish to get out the best work that you can put out Right now here, you see me again, just cleaning up the hairline, making it a lot sharper, doing detailed work, cleaning up around the ear, just getting this cut as, as sharp and as proficient as possible. As I said earlier, this client didn't want anything cut off the top and he already had mousse in his hair. So the top was a little kind of hard because the mousse had dried up. So knowing that you got to work around that as well. And that comes with time, that comes with experience. You know, some of my other haircut tutorials, I will be showing you on different types, different grades of hair, how to fade them and how to give them the best cut without highlights. You know, that's my main thing. I know highlighting is big right now and don't get me wrong, I do use highlights, but I like to stay away from them as much as I can because I like that cut to look just as fresh that next day when you, when you wake up in the morning. Okay, so. This is pretty much my cut here. I like to finish all my cuts off with the shears. Even though he didn't get anything cut off the top, there's always loose ends sticking up. Those shears allow you to clean your hair cut up nice and sharp. It allows you to put that finishing touch on your haircut. It also impresses the customer. You know, they customers tell me all the time, nobody used shears on my hair, hair before. Nobody used scissors on my hair before. That was the finished product. That was a mid ball fade. Definitely like me, subscribe to my channel if you like my content. This is a series on beginning barbers and experienced barbers, but this is gonna be a series from the start to the finish. This was my mid fade haircut. Make sure you check me out. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And also, if you're already a customer of mine and you want to get five dollars off your next haircut when you're booking your appointment put in haircut tutorial now i might shorten that a little put i might shorten that a little bit you know check it out on the screen haircut i'll just say haircuts put in haircuts as your coupon code and you will receive five dollars off your next haircut okay keep it simple this week just put in haircuts while you're checking out and you will receive five dollars off your next haircut once again thank you for checking out cuts by dre new styles mobile barber make sure you check me out again next week for a new video on this tutorial haircutting for beginners 101 thanks a lot peace